What's up boys and girls? We're in my 2004 BMW X5. Today I'm showing off my Nexus 7 tablet install. So this project was broken into three parts, the tablet retrofit and dash being the easiest. I was able to rework a double DIN kit into a quick release system I'll demonstrate later. The second stage was hard wiring these keys to the media keys of a Bluetooth keyboard. The keyboard resides behind this radio. and allows me to control my music without taking my eyes off the road. Do not recommend this modification unless you really like a challenge. Getting into the front of the radio is a project in itself. When you finally get to the board, the switches you want to take over, in my case these, these media buttons, um, the switches you want to take over have to be isolated from the rest of the circuit or you risk damage. You need to modify the contact area in each button membrane from resistive to conductive. Uh, the last part of the project was to relocate the modified OEM radio. So my radio once sat here, um, excuse me, actually sat here in my CD player. No, I was right, excuse me, my radio sat here, my CD player sat here. It's actually still behind there, my original CD player, and here is the OEM radio relocated. So after that, um, I wrapped up the project, no pun intended, uh, with a 3M titanium vinyl wrap. So you can see that here, and that replaces my dated wooden trim. So beyond the Bluetooth uh, keyboard radio hack, the electrical is kept simple. There is ignition switched relay to command my footwell uh, socket. Down there you could actually see my USB pigtails as well as if you look further back you could see uh, the pigtail for my, my shift light right here. So it has an override switch in case I would like to retain stock function. Uh, I use this outlet for a 3 amp USB charger which powers the Nexus and the Bluetooth keyboard that resides behind my radio. Uh, an additional button right here was added for sleeping the Nexus, which required modding the Nexus and obviously adding that switch. And most of the remaining magic is done using Android OS and Android's applications. My Nexus is unrooted and feeds audio via the analog headphone output. So, alright, without further ado, I'll turn on my ignition. This will apply 5 volts to the Nexus, and the application MacroDroid will enable Wi Fi and Bluetooth as well as disable the screen timeout. So it'll start up. There's my home screen. You can see the music starts playing. Um, I try to keep the home screen as simple as possible and to look the part. I've got the BMW live wallpaper spinning right there, perfectly positioned uh, between all my widgets. Bottom left, I've got slider widgets that allows me to change the brightness of the screen as well as the volume. I've got my N7 player widget right here. Uh, Pandora widget, simple time and temperature. I use a program called Icon Changer to make majority of the icons kind of a red theme to uh, to match the interior of the of the BMW itself. So um, let's go uh, into navigation. It's one of the reasons I selected a tablet instead of uh, a navigation head unit because, as we know, Google Navigation pretty much blows everything out of the water. Uh, you could see I have I use a program called Overlays to overlay specific widgets, so I've got my N7 widget and my Pandora widget here, as well as my brightness slider control. Uh, obviously, again, uh, Google Navigation is phenomenal. Um, Norwalk, Connecticut. It just, uh, again, it just comes down to looking and feeling the part. Oops. Let's go back to navigation here, so it'll start up navigation, and you see, again, these are overlaid, a nice, nice convenient spot without interrupting much. So um, that's the navigation, it's got the overlaid widgets, we'll go back to the home screen, I'm just going to close out of that, go back to the home screen. I use N7 for all my music, I find it a really clean interface, um, you can go, you can browse your albums by zooming in and zooming out like that so you can see all the artist names or you can zoom in a little bit and you can just scroll through your music that way. And as I've indicated before, there's actually a Bluetooth keyboard that sits behind my radio interfacing with these buttons. So I'm going to turn the volume up a little so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll do next track, next track, play, pause. 
play pause next track and of course I've got my OEM volume control here the actual audio um, sounds great I must say you know I'm kind of an audiophile so it does kind of irk me that I'm using analog input but for the sake of what I'm doing here and for everything else the Android brings I can I can overlook that interface so uh, I do have 16 the 16 gig model so I use Pandora a lot for streaming but I find 16 gig is a, a, a nice amount of music to uh, to circulate I also have uh, the Nexus Media Importer installed this will allow me to pull content off off a thumb drive now I'm going through a little trouble just like everyone else trying to get uh, on the go cable to charge and uh, and pull music off a thumb drive um, for example and I am going to build probably a, just a simple switch circuit so I could flip a switch and either charge or pull that media but I could also root the device something I haven't done yet I'm trying to keep the variables down to a minimum so when something goes wrong I can easily isolate it and it really does everything perfectly I'm, I'm okay with the, the 16 gigs of music so um, yeah, I'll say also the, the media buttons with the Bluetooth also make me kind of future-proof. So I can interface with just about anything I sync that keyboard to. So it allows me to install a computer if I wanted to in the future or just upgrade it with a new tablet. So uh, obviously Pandora is a must-have. I can control that as well. Um, I use my phone tethered. Uh, right now I'm connected to my home network, which sucks, but I should be able to stream at least music. Um, and I could show you that the controls work for that as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, my, my home Wi-Fi just doesn't hack it for in here. I usually uh, tether my phone. So, in any case, these, uh, these buttons do work with Pandora as well. Okay. So, uh, that's Pandora. Obviously, I have, I have movies, too. Uh, I'm not sure... Uh, what I'm using. I think I'm just using their stock movie player and I've got uh, a few music videos on here. So gotta have gotta have some media like that in case you get stuck in traffic or you're just waiting for someone. Uh, my media buttons will also control that as well. Pause play. I could go next track if there was another, another uh, video queued up there. So just go back here. And um, I also use a program called Car Dash Droid. I don't really use it that much because, again, I built my front end to look and feel the part of a front end. Uh, there, finally, Pandora has kicked in, so just to show you that. So it can actually play and pause Pandora now. Next track. So nice copacetic communication to either media program. Um, so, yeah, Car Dash Droid is what I started out with. Um, it's a nice piece of program, again, using overlays to overlay the N7 widget there and Pandora's widget, so I can cue that up if I wanted to, or just switch to Mac Lethal, excuse me, my, my music, which is always Mac Lethal at this point. Um, if I scroll right, I've got some applications, I'm going to go through the Torque OBD tool in a second. Uh, if I go left, this phone panel that Car Dashroid provides actually interfaces to uh, to a program called Tablet Talk, and that communicates with my phone. And I'll go through that too in a moment. Um, sorry, I am using a script here. I just want to make sure I report on everything. Um, so, see, that's ta that's Tablet Talk, or that at least interfaces to Tablet Talk. I'm going to show you Tablet Talk. Uh, we're using my wife's phone because I, I can't use my phone otherwise uh, it'll kick off my video but if you go left on my home screen here it's also some tablet talk widgets so you can actually see uh, my text messages here you could actually reply to text messages so um, you could go into that and there I could see my uh, conversation here and I could also uh, reply to it which is a nice convenient feature it also let me know when someone's calling in which again I'm gonna try to embed another video where I demonstrate that use but it is really convenient just bear in mind that all of your audio communication will be done through the phone itself so whether you have a Bluetooth head unit connected to it or uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about adding a mixer circuit to combine the input of the tablet and uh, and my Android phone, so I could switch over. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. So that's Car Dash Droid. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do uh, is I'll we'll check out the OBD software. So I'm gonna switch over to the driver side. We'll 
check that out. Okay, in the driver's side now, my X5, you can see I've got my OBD uh, Bluetooth reader right there. Oh yeah, $14 item on Amazon Prime with shipping. You really can't beat that. It's an Elm 327 interface. Again, Bluetooth OBD2 reader. Communicates with the tablet perfectly. So what we're going to do is uh, use a program called Torque. So we'll open that up. So I'm going to start my engine. And uh, in a moment, once the CPU coordinates with the Bluetooth reader, you'll see that gauge become active. And right about now, probably. Okay, took a little, took a little longer than I wanted. So uh, here I've got real-time revs. Uh, I can go into real-time information for additional gauges. Really neat feature for for fourteen dollars to to add this functionality was really neat. Uh, I've got acceleration, throttle, coolant, intake temperatures, as well as my air uh, air temperatures and my rev, uh, my revs up there. So I've got you know some interaction, and I could see uh, some some things going on. And of course, really neat that I can go in and and pull fault codes as well. Um, geez, I've never tried. I don't think I'll pull anything. <laughs> So just really nice, nice little add-on for 14 bucks. You can't beat it, and just it just shows you the flexibility of the Android OS. It's amazing, um, you know, and just to have it all at your fingertips too, and be able to, you know, to switch between your applications, whether you're, you know, streaming music, and you want to go back to, you know, your torque. It's all, it's all really easily done, in a nice user interface. So I've got no fault codes on my BMW. That's a good thing. Uh, so, yeah, great program. Um, next, I'll show you the sleep automation. So I use a program called Mac for Droid. When I pull the power from uh, from the Nexus, it detects that, disables Wi-Fi, Bluetooth to keep the battery going, and also invokes a 15-second sleep timer, which inevitably uh, will turn the unit off. So I'm going to ease out of the ignition here. Okay, I think I'm not timing out because I'm actually in torque, so let me just go home and wait for that same timeout. It's about 15 seconds, the screen goes dim, and then it'll shut itself off. There we go. Dim and off. So uh, the next thing we'll do here is we're going to remove the head unit. You can see my, my assembly, my quick removal assembly. So I'm just grabbing a pen here so I could do this single-handedly. So first thing I do is I push firmly on the bottom here, just to pop pop that in. Then I could pull the top down, and uh, that'll stay there snug. And then what that allows me to do is I can pull my audio, my power, and this is the interface I created. For uh, for the sleep button down here, you could also see my original stereo behind here. Uh, that that does work. So if I put the keys back the ignition right now, whoa, my battery's getting low. It tells me um, I could switch. FM still works, and I can even still read the CD that's in there. And I even have a jumper. And if I jump the center two pins here, oh, my Nexus just fell out. I could actually uh, eject the CD. I'm just gonna drop that. So my Nexus fell down because I was. I uh, was uh, being too rough with it. So uh, there it is. Uh, so I could pull my audio cable, pull the USB data. I will pull the my connector for the sleep switch. And then I can remove my bezel. And you can see how my Nexus is slapped on there. So what I've done here is this is a double DIN kit. And I've sleeved 
uh, sleeved the PEMS that originally came off it, so these PEMS were, were, were originally there. So I've sleeved them so I can add this bracket, and then I use just a cotter pin system to, uh, to fix it. So I've got a pen here. Uh, nope, that's my e-cig. And I got a pen, and I'm just going to, uh, to pop out one of the pins. And when that's done, just move this aside. I can remove it too. It's uh, it's protected, so I'm not scuffing up the rear of my Nexus. And uh, and there it is, right there. So I can remove it, bring it inside. Could do all that in less than a minute. Really easy to uh, line up. It just kind of falls into place. I've got a uh, temporary seal right now. I got to work on that, but uh, that just helps protect the face of it. So um, that's pretty much it. That's